Hey guys, so in this video I thought that I would share some information about we or what we as medical assistants are expected to do during our annual Medicare wellness exams or visits. Um, it may, like the wording of those appointments may vary from facility to facility, but at the facility that I work at we call them Medicare annual wellness visits. Um, so this is just from like a clinic nurse or medical assistant that works in a clinic perspective of what we are expected to do to help our providers get everyone ready for these visits. These are basically the Medicare version of like your annual physical. Um, so you're basically like, there's a lot more that goes into it as compared to just like a normal annual physical though. And that's partially just because like, I feel like Medicare kind of makes sure that you cover a lot more bases than just a regular physical before you're on Medicare does, if that makes sense. So basically before I even start, I get a whole bunch of paperwork ready. So I have at least these two forms with me and I will talk about what those forms are in just a second. Those of you who work as medical assistants or nurses in a clinic setting, you may have seen these before. Um, if you have Epic, these are actually built into the system, which I really like. Like if your patients use my chart, definitely try to encourage them to go through the questionnaires on my chart so then they can save a lot of time when they're actually in the clinic waiting to be seen for their doctor's appointment because it saves a good amount of time. Um, I absolutely love when my patients fill out those questionnaires before coming into the clinic. So from the get-go, I will bring them in the way that our clinic is set up, like right inside the door from the lobby, we have a scale. So I will have them step on the scale first. I usually bring a little notebook or a sticky note and I will write down their weight. Then I have them walk past the exam rooms that um, my provider uses down the hallway just a little bit farther. And then we do a vision test um, that's using like the eye charts that are hanging on the wall. Um, I basically just, you know, go through that whole process then we go back to the room so then I will you know talk to them make sure that they are actually here for a Medicare annual visit because sometimes we've had people who it says they are but they're not so it was some sort of like scheduling snafu or somebody put in the wrong information so I like to make sure that I get that information straight before I move forward um, if they are there for a Medicare visit, a Medicare annual, then I will go through the whole vitals process. I will go through rooming as far as like, um, you know, going through their medications and all that stuff. If you guys are curious about rooming and that whole process, I can make a more detailed video about like the rooming process and what is expected, like what is involved in that whole process if you guys wanna see that as well. But this particular video, I'm just focused on the Medicare visit. Um, so I'll go through the whole rooming process and at the end, like after I have gone through their meds, gone through their allergies, um, checked their immunizations and stuff like that, um, I will go through, we use Epic at the clinic I work at. So we have the HM tab, which is health maintenance, which um, shows us their care gaps. So whether that is like an ACP discussion where that's advanced directives or um, if they have a depression screening, that needs to be done or like fall risk, I will ask them those questions. I will address whatever it is that needs to be addressed in those open care gaps um, so that they can close. So I can also talk about care gaps and stuff like that more in a different video. Let's get back to what this is about. So I will go through that. Usually I will, um, we have flow sheets that are on Epic from our hospital where I will usually ask people if they use a CPAP or a BiPAP when they sleep. If they say yes, I skip the next step. If they say no, then I do a sleep study screening where it asks like if you wake up choking or gasping for breath, um, if you're overweight, if you have a history of high blood pressure, stuff like that, um, to see if they qualify for a sleep study. After that, I will go through, we actually have a whole Medicare questionnaire, which asks a whole bunch of questions. It asks about like how many times they see the dentist every year, how many times they brush or floss their teeth every day, how many servings of fruits and or vegetables they eat on a daily basis, 
it's a whole bunch of stuff. It also asks them if they need assistance with like bathing, walking, climbing stairs, driving, managing their money or their medications, um, a whole bunch of stuff. So then once I go through this whole questionnaire with them, then comes this paper. So this is actually a mini cog. This is a mini cognitive assessment, um, which these are actually built into our EPIC program, but I find it a lot easier um, to just use this paper. I print it off. I have copies in each of the exam rooms that myself and my provider, sorry about that. My provider actually showed up and he was trying to use the bathroom. So anyways, I have copies of these in the doors. Um, we have like a folder you can put papers in and stuff. Um, I have these in each one of the doors of the exam rooms that my provider and I use every day. Um, except for out here, we don't have those. So I keep folders that are full of this type of paperwork. So basically, if you guys have never seen these, a mini cog is where you ask them, like these are lists of three words. You have, you say these words to them, you have them repeat them. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna have them draw a clock with all the numbers, put the hands at 10 past 11, and um, then you're gonna ask them to repeat those three words. And you give a score based on how many words out of the three that they were able to remember, if they were able to draw the clock or if they refused and add up the total points. And that tells you like their dementia risk or something. Um, yeah, a cut point of less than three on the mini cog has been validated for dementia screening but many individuals with clinically meaningful cognitive impairment will score higher. When greater sensitivity is desired, a cut point of less than four is recommended as it may indicate a need for further evaluation of cognitive status. And then I will get ready to leave the room at that point. I usually have, I also have clipboards and pens in each of my doors as well. I will have one of these screenings on the clipboard with a pen. This is a PHQ-9 and GAD-7. For those of you who are unaware of what these are, the PHQ-9 is a depression screening. The GAD-7 is a or an anxiety screening. So like it asks questions about over the last two weeks, how many days have you been bothered by any of the following problems? Little interest or pleasure, feeling down, depressed or hopeless, trouble falling, staying asleep, stuff like that. Um, and they have, like I said, the one for depression, and then they have the one for anxiety as well. So at this point, I will hand them the clipboard with the pen. I don't like to watch them do this because I feel like some people will write down um, answers that aren't entirely honest or truthful. And so I feel like if I'm able to let them fill this out in private, then that is better. Um, so that's what I usually do. So basically, um, I will hand them that clipboard and then I will say that my provider is going to be in with you shortly. And if they have any questions at that time, I address those questions. Otherwise, that is kind of where things end for me um, at our main clinic. Um, and then I just kind of like at our main clinic, I'm not responsible for lab draws or anything like that. But out here at this clinic, I am. So basically, um, I will be like out here on the Medicare annuals, he orders a lot of blood work, the provider that I work with. And so I will do that blood work unless the person like hasn't been fasting or if they um, say that they don't wanna get it done today, um, they can go into our lab in town and get that done. But we try to get a lot of people to do their lab work before they leave because a lot of them won't return to get it done. Um, and plus it just kind of lets us know like where they are on you know the, the grand scheme of things or in the grand scheme of things so anyways I just thought that that would be a little interesting thing to talk about hopefully you guys found this helpful um, if you guys have any questions about anything medical assistant related um, phlebotomy related because phlebotomy is part of my job um, out here at this clinic anyway and yeah Obviously, like I said, I can't film a lot of what I do, but I can answer questions and I can talk about different processes and procedures and things like that. We do a lot of different things with the provider that I work with now. Um, so yeah, I started out with one provider and now I'm working with a totally different one. 
Um, I started out with a DO, and now I'm with a PA. So it's it's been a good change. But anyways, I just thought that I would share that information with you. I hope you are having a wonderful day. And yeah, let me know if there's anything else that you guys would like to hear me talk about in the future. And I'll see you next time.